Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts, that we may hear and receive your word, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Welcome, everyone, member and visitor alike, and I truly, from the bottom of my heart, wish each and every one of you a uh, most uh, blessed, uh, blessed Easter. Chancel looks beautiful. Amen? Amen? Looks beautiful. Of course, after you go through Holy Thursday, Good Friday, it's even sweeter, isn't it? After you walk with Jesus in his passion, it's even sweeter to be sure to see this. Just looks beautiful. You know, as we exited my office this morning, uh, in order to come to the sanctuary and, and uh, begin the service, I said in my office to Lori, well, honey, I love you. Are we ready? And Lori said, um, yeah, everything, everything looks good. We're ready to go. And as we're walking out of my office, she says this to me. She says, you know, Stu, it really looks like your robe's tight. She did. And of course, I had to explain to her that I have to have this dry cleaned because of makeup that gets on here from hugs and it shrinks. That's what I'd explain that to her that the robe shrinks every time I have a dry clean, every time. Well, I want to begin with a thought on this uh, Easter Sunday, an interesting thought. Isn't it strange? Isn't it strange that on Easter morning, at the breaking of dawn, when Mary came to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus, that she reacted the way she did? I mean, think about it. Isn't it strange? She ran to tell Peter that the tomb was empty. Not that Jesus had risen, but that the tomb was empty. And Peter and John, of course, upon hearing the news, ran to the grave site to see for themselves. They looked into the tomb. They saw the burial clothes and the napkin for Jesus' head rolled up separately and very carefully, and it doesn't even seem that they remembered the words of Jesus, that he would rise on the third day, that he would rise on the third day. Why, we wonder, why do we have an accounting why do we have an accounting of these details about the fear of looking into the tomb and the way that the grave clothes are lying when it seems they should have been excitedly sharing the news that Jesus, Jesus had risen? Perhaps the reason for these details, perhaps the reason for these details is that John is calling his readers to faith to faith. John is calling his hearers to believe. And the call is to believe that Jesus Christ truly is the Son of God. Now, this morning started in the dark hours of death with grief for the loss of a loved one with an emptiness and loneliness like no other. That's truly where Easter must begin. Because it's in the darkness, friends, it's in the darkness that the great news of Easter meets us. Actually, actually, Easter began a long, long time ago with an almighty and everlasting God who continues to love us all even in the midst of our darkness. Even then. Easter continued for us as we face the dark hours of Good Friday. And it burst forth in 
mystery and grandeur as God the Father glorified his son by raising him to be the victor over death and the grave. And Easter is indeed the beautiful truth, the beautiful truth that our gracious God sent his son as the answer, the answer to our brokenness, our sinfulness, our humanness. And for all that, we who are gathered here this morning can be ever so grateful. Each one of us here has had our moments of darkness, our moments of pain, our times of brokenness when our hopes were dashed and our dreams destroyed. And we were left with what seemed to be an immovable stone. We've heard the doctor say words we didn't want to hear. We've anguished over words from our spouse, our children, our friends. We've watched what we'd hoped would be be a uh, thriving business turn to ashes, and we've been assaulted by the throes of death itself, to be sure. And the stone, the stone became heavier and buried our expectations for life even deeper, even deeper. Now, friends, pain does happen. Pain does happen. It's a part of life, and it leaves us numb. Sometimes facing a, a new morning is as tough a job as we think we can handle. Our lives get overrun with pain bills, looking after our children, facing the day in and the day out chores, wondering when the good weather is ever going to come. And yet, in spite of all that, our gracious God sees us through. We only have to look around, look around to those seated beside us to see an Easter story. Now, I've been here long enough now to have seen many of you in times of crisis. And I've seen you hold fast I've seen you hold fast to the resurrection hope that we celebrate here this Easter morning. Some of you, some of you will recognize yourselves and remember having said these words to me. I don't know what I would have done without God to help me through. Or what on earth do those people do who have no faith to cling to. Or I just knew that God was there with me, surrounding me with his love. Or I have never done so much praying as I have in these last few months. And one last one I heard again just this past week. You know, when you get to be my age... They say it's the golden years, but to me it seems like all I do is go to funerals of my friends. I could never handle this without faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what Easter's all about, friends. That's what it's all about. Easter is about faith. Easter is about hope. Easter is about the assurance that Jesus Christ did indeed die for our sins, and he has indeed set us free. And by the way, I don't know either. I don't know how those who have no faith can cope. I just don't know. And so, as we gather together here on this Easter morning, I want to I want to remind you of some scripture that 
goes beyond the promised rising of Jesus Christ to our promised rising. We find it in John chapter 5, verse 24. And here's what our Lord says. Whoever hears my voice and believes in me who sent me will have eternal life and will not be condemned. That, my friends, that's the best news of all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's rise now when we'll join together in singing, He Lives. <laughs>